before we move forward. Visual artist on the First Coast. Joining us today, my friend Elena Olander, a visual artist who specializes in fine art illustration, but also creates murals. Elena, hello. Good morning. And then we've got my dude, Malcolm Jackson, award-winning artist and photographer. Malcolm, how you doing? What's good, man? It's so long, man. Too so, long. I know. It's been too long. It's been too long since we've seen each other in person. This one, Erin Kendrick. I see her all the time. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, God is good. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you today? Aaron Kendrick is a visual artist and arts edu ed educator. And my man Overstreet Dacost, visual artist using mediums from traditional canvas to wood frame doors. He's amazing. And also, I mean, like these four people around the table are all friends of mine. Uh, Overstreet, how you doing, man? Great. <laughs> all right, Street, you got to get a little closer to that microphone for me. Listen, this is a meeting of friends, but you're my friend too. So call in and be a part of the conversation. 549-2937. You can tweet us at FCC on air. First Coast Connect at WJCT.org. You can also reach us on Facebook. We are here. Join the conversation. Guys, just kicking it off. Please talk to me a little bit about the challenges of being a visual artist on the First Coast. Hmm, I would say one of the challenges. One, one, I'm I'm happy to be here. I will say that this is my hometown. I was born and raised here. Um, but I would definitely say one of the challenges is um, visibility. You know, when it comes to being an artist here, and then also having some vi visibility outside of the city. Um, I would love to have more like top down opportunities uh, to show in other cities to have like connections via government through other cities so like there could be programs where there's like exchanges between cultural councils or you know things like that so that's one of the things i would say is it's just visibility and being able to have the support of our like local government and local organizations to um facilitate that yeah i think uh one of the challenges is space because uh, artists are always looking for space and I'm fortunate to have, I mean, I've been in the same space for over 10 years, but other artists, you know, they're constantly moving out, uh, you know, almost every year, possibly to a different space. And um, I currently have two spaces. I'm looking for a third one. So <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> space is what we need yeah, Elena, to actually create. Yeah, Elena, I know that that's something that, like, you, you've been dealing with a little bit. Yeah, I... I think space is truly a challenge um, and not just space, but affordable, sustainable space for artists long term. Um, there are more artists and there are spaces available to accommodate the need. So having more support in that respect would be phenomenal. Yeah. Malcolm? I think that and also even just awareness, too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I remember we was at that dinner with uh, that breakfast with uh, Deborah Roberts, and right. uh, mm -hmm. I forgot who said and said, you know, I'm a local based artist. I said, no, you're a Jacksonville based artist. Right. And, you know, the, the general conception is an artist is, you know, oh, I never met one before. And, you know, they think they only live in these major markets where artists is anywhere and art is anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, so just having a general awareness that you have artists that are your next door neighbor um, and going to support them and, do a whole lot for everybody. And then you bring in more awareness and more people to be more intrigued into what a Jacksonville-based artist brings to the table. Yeah. You know, one thing that I think about with, when, when I'm thinking about Jacksonville is that we uh, tend to be a very humble city in the mm -hmm. sense that, like, in this city, uh, you think about uh, us uh, as, as a city on a whole, and you're like, well, we're not Atlanta, and uh, we're not Miami, Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to be either one of those things. I think that Jacksonville is an amazing city with top notch artists. And so, like, I would like you guys to just brag about yourselves right now, because I know all the amazing things that you've done. Malcolm, I've seen your pictures in national magazines. Um, I did Overstreet. Like, I know personally, like you travel all over and, and display your work. Aaron, Elena, both the same. So please, uh, the floor is open. Brag a little bit. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm again, I'm blessed to be able to do everything I've done and being able to travel the world and being from Jacksonville. I didn't move anywhere to do what I'm doing. You know, I um, the most recent thing I did was uh, I worked on um, the 1619 Project, which is on Hulu, which has actually been nominated for an Emmy. Um, so, you know, praying if uh, 
So I get to get one of those. But just even being on set for something like that was incredible. As a photographer? Yeah, as a photographer, I did uh, the set unit photography for that show, and I got to meet um, Nile Rodgers. Uh, so that alone was amazing for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, just working with them, working with the Jaguars, working, you know, New York Times, Washington Post. I've done stuff with Netflix. Um, I do a lot of stuff with Nike, Nike Running. Um at this point, it's kind of like if you name it, I probably work with them at this point, to be quite honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elena? Oh, um, yeah. I feel like to say Jacksonville-based artist is a great way to discuss um, your locale and where you live, but having a worldwide mindset is something I feel like I've advocated for a while now. And um, I think as far as my work goes... Recently, I had the opportunity to go to L.A. and New York in the past month. I go to Tampa and Orlando this weekend and Atlanta and other things coming up in the fall. So I find myself traveling outside of the city, but I like living here. Mm -hmm. I like the culture and the identity and the friends and the collaborative nature that we have together. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I've seen you doing murals like all over the country like uh if you go to your instagram page like you're it's like where's elena at now <laughs> it's mostly in the southeast right now but yeah i there's plenty of opportunity to to work all over the place how about you Aaron? Get, get, give us a little bragging rights <laughs> yes. um i would definitely agree that this city is full of um amazing artists and not just on the commercial end not just on the hobby end but like critical like artists who are making very critical work who deserve to be in the larger art conversation um Myself, personally, I do have the opportunity this December to show at the PRISM exhibition um, at Art Basel for the first time. So I treat that kind of like my debut. I'm a fellow with, I'm, a, I'm what's called a garden fellow with Tila Art Studios in Atlanta, and that's the vehicle by which I'll be able to show. So I'm really sort of put, putting all of my effort into that right now. And not only making it about myself, but... Um, as I get farther and farther into it, because there's a lot of education that plays into this fellowship, really kind of like reaching back into my art community here and making sure that I'm translating that information over to them. And as much as I can kind of get all of us down there and into the right venues and, you know, in spaces with the right people, that's my plan kind of going into it. Yeah. Street? Uh, I think the, biggest, the best bragging right is the artwork itself, mm -hmm. right? Um, if I would say there's nothing else like it no one else like me and you'll never find one i've been called the dave Chappelle of art the john stewart of art it has humor it's fantastic it's the best storytelling ever that's over street I, I i believe you brother i believe you so so um going going from that because actually like when i think of your art i i, I think it's you know, i should tell the listener that like besides malcolm we're, and we're going to change that soon besides malcolm I, I i have a piece of art from all of you um and street like the uh the work that i have that i tend to think of you a, a, a lot and and the work you do is very political um yeah. but one of my favorite series that you did uh was a series of uh i guess the right term is a bullseye on on yeah on targets on ta yeah targets yes. um can you talk about the political nature of your work and how Jacksonville has influenced it? Uh, well, it all started with actually here at Jacksonville about, I think, 20, uh, I don't know, 2009, I think, something like that. And um, there was a show called All Things Florida. And I like to think outside the box. So I was like, ah, you know what? Everybody's going to have palm trees and pelicans and sea and water and, and I wanted to do something that was completely different so I thought how can I do something different so I came up with this concept of uh, using gun range targets and using them as a magazine as a political statement but using them as a magazine cover called the Florida targets which will target uh, certain issues so the first issue was uh, I guess around the time of uh, I dealing with the Florida lottery and I had one dealing with breast cancer awareness and um, I forgot what was the third one. Yeah. But it all started just, you know, being me thinking outside the box and uh, trying not to do what everybody else was doing. But it all started in Jacksonville. Yeah. Using the targets as 
targeted issues. Elena, when I, uh, uh, Elena, I'm I'm saying Elena and looking at Aaron. Sorry, <laughs> Aaron. Uh, when I think of your art, I think of like the series uh, of of little black girls, which mm -hmm. feels, uh, in some sense, I think that people could look at it and just be like, oh, these are nice little black girls. It's it's great. But in another sense, it's a very political piece. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about that? And I think the intention of it is for, us, for it to really function on both levels. Um, there are these backstories to these little girls. Um, in my artwork in general, I'm very interested in um, showing and starting conversations about just like humanness in black women and girls you know not these sort of like um stereotypes and tropes and things like that that um we've carried with us you know over generations but to just you know find ways to bring about conversations about about humanness about empathy and the little girls themselves um sort of became like the best vehicle for me to ask people like when does your mind start to change like when do you start formulating um, your ideas about who black women and uh, who black women are and 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 you know um why why we're here and and what we stand for and on the surface of that it gives me an opportunity to have little girls that I know that are around me little black girls give them the opportunity to see themselves as fine art you know that's probably the best part of it for me is that they get to see themselves in these spaces so I am very intentional about that like putting the, the imagery and the stories of us in fine art spaces to be in that larger like art historical conversation. So that's that's the best part of it is, is watching them see themselves as art. You can join the conversation at 549-2937. You can tweet us at FCC on air. First Coast Connect at WJCT.org. And you can find us on Facebook. Elena, to you, like your process, it, um, it feels political as well. Like, like, can you tell me, you know, What's your thought process when you're creating a piece? Um, I have several bodies of work that lend itself to the overarching thing. But um, recently I've been interested in kind of like um, visiting my childhood and re-understanding um, kind of any sort of traumas that I might have experienced and rewriting that narrative um, for myself in hopes that it reaches others to see that journey and like moving through healing process. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of happening in my work in a general sense throughout the years, but um, it ebbs and flows based on um, what I'm trying to uh, work through at the time of creation. Yeah. Yeah. Malcolm, how about you? Um, well, for me, this song, two levels right one is being able to show people in Jacksonville what they truly look like and have a sense of pride in who they are and, and kind of uh, piggyback off of what Aaron said of being intentional and, and putting these people in these spaces um, and then from there you're kind of looking at the nation as a whole a lot um, a lot of my work centers on race predominantly African-American culture um, but it's talking about class it's talking about economics it's talking about you know fellowship and love and just how we're moving and maneuvering in this area and I think Jacksonville one is the perfect canvas to tell what's going on nationally from this perspective so using that and then using my own community um, to be able to speak on that while also lifting my community up and, and you know being that guy that wants to take those portraits of those people who may not have those portraits I grew up seeing you know you know you can say whatever you want about Jacksonville we all know Jacksonville is a little rough around the edges um, and, you know, growing up, you only seen maybe mug shots in the news, but, you know, you didn't see those those nice ports that you see everybody else, you know, and then I was like, I took that upon myself, like, I'll be that guy to provide those images. There's a, a, a one of my more known images is the guy on the dirt bikes, and uh, Ham, rest in peace, he, he did pass away back in, I think, 2020, um, but hearing that his mom and his sister say, you know, the images that you took of him just riding his dirt bike are the most positive that I've seen of him. And I always try to keep those images alive. And that always reminds me of this is what I do what I do. In what ways uh, does living in Jacksonville impact your ability to make a living as an artist? Hmm. Um, one, I think, I, on the positive end, I think there's nothing here but space and opportunity. Yep. You know, like I went to graduate school in Atlanta. So I had every reason to like stay in Atlanta in this larger art community and, and fight my way, you know, up there. 
But I, I thought that, you know, it's been over 10 years, but I thought that, you know, I could, there's nothing but space and opportunity there. So why not go there, find, go back home, find my way, um, grow with the city. Um, there are challenges here, but, but at the same time, you know, I can sit around and complain or I could be a part of the solution. So I've done everything that I could and am doing everything that I can um, to be a working artist, an active working artist in the community and also function in the education space. So whether that be um, at JAMS in my nonprofit program where I teach, um, whether it be just like community ed. So um, I am very committed to um, what I believe is the reason that so many of us don't, let's say, apply for larger opportunities, international um, fellowships, grants, exhibitions, national things, is because we collectively aren't prepared, you know, to apply, meaning paperwork. So I started Artist Types, which is an organization that helps artists write, you know, helps artists with their professional presentation so that we feel like we're ready to apply for these things. We have the work, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm just kind of doing my, my best to um, offer myself to my community here. And I think um, there's nothing but good to come of that. Yeah. Um, I think that um, it seems like there's a lot of opportunities that are coming. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> every day there's a meeting about the arts and it seems like uh, the people involved in these meetings are all part of people that we know. So it seems like there's part of a new administration right now that's happening and people are getting more involved and I'm looking forward to what's to come. Uh, but as far as opportunity comes, in my experience, uh, I've never felt like there was a lack of opportunity. And I've always, uh, I feel like as long as you have a positive attitude and are, you are consistent and you are good at what you do, you will never have to call anybody. Yeah. Yeah, Jacksonville is, is the place when I think about Jacksonville. Uh, Malcolm, I, lo I love your description uh, that Jacksonville is rough around the edges um, <laughs> because it is rough around yeah. the edges, but I love that roughness. Like, That's I what mean, makes us who we are. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like if, if it was all smooth and pretty, I don't know if I'd be all that interested <laughs> into it. Um, but I, when I think about Jacksonville, I think, you know, exactly what you guys are saying, that like it gives you space to actually... Um, find who you are and find your artistic voice because you're not being crowded out. And at the same time, um, the arts community here is very uh, uplifting. Um, Absolutely. Like all, all four of you around this table, you all know each other pretty well. You've mm -hmm. seen each other all mm -hmm. over town. Uh, the question I have, though, like goes up against that idea. Do you think that they're, um, that it's too easy to get comfortable in Jacksonville because of that? I mean, it's a yes and no. Um, I think it became because of, you know, success in any measure can make you become that person, right? And if it's not done right, no matter big or small success, you can grow ego from it. So, you know, you can have that. But at the same time, too, um, you know, well, I guess that's the beauty of Jacksonville is that it stays making you hungry because you always have to go out and earn something. Um, and that's kind of where that, 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 I think, where that balance comes into play whereas you can take the successes that you do have from it but you have to remember because you are from only Jacksonville you got so much more work that you have to do um and for me that keeps me going um and kind of you know what Aaron's also doing and continuing in education so while I'm not in more of the public space like that thanks to social media I'm able to reach back and talk to younger photographers and younger artists um and giving them the guide way you know I, I tell a lot of young guys all the time I'm putting you in these positions now because I need you to make more money than what I'll make because you're going to be able to do that now because mm -hmm. the door is open. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these doors wasn't open before I got here into the space. Now, now that I'm here, it's my job to make sure you walk through that door, no problem, and be better and then make sure that you pass that down to that next person so we don't have this issue anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about uh, a lot of young artists that are out there and uh, maybe – you know, are not at the level of success that, that you are. Um, what would be your advice to them about getting active in the community? Like, where should they go? Who, who are the people they should seek out? That sort of thing. Um, I, I would definitely first say show up. We actually kind of went through a time period post-COVID where there were like a, a, like a, small, a group of people who 
really like sort of complained a lot on social media about how no one was helping them and um you know how there there weren't opportunities out there and the collective voice was just like show up there's lots of things going on we have a very active arts and culture community and the people who are out there getting help and and we're all kind of like I, i'm sure we can all name someone that we're talking to on, on like a weekly monthly basis um it's because they showed up right and they do the work. So it's like it's start there, like show up, do the work. There's a lot of us out here in a lot of different capacities, art mediums, ethnicities, whatever you need to kind of make that first connection. We're all out here. So just show up. Yeah. I I, I believe in the uh, quote from a movie a long time ago, which uh, was just, if you build it, they will come. Absolutely. And when I got started doing spoken word, um, I mean, I'm just going to be really honest. When I got started doing spoken word, there was basically like maybe two or three um, venues. Those venues were primarily, um, for lack of a better term, literary. Like people were reading, like, you know, forgive my bloodness, but snooty works of, mm-hmm. of, of poetry, like yeah. <laughs> the thou and all mm-hmm. of this. And, and it did not excite me. I did my thing there and I was definitely the like, everybody would look at me like, what? And so I decided that like, I just needed to create a space for myself Absolutely. to do my stuff because I felt like there were other people out there that wanted to do that as well. And me and two friends of mine uh, started putting on spoken word nights in Jacksonville. They got big, they did well, blah, blah, blah. But that was the beginning of it. Like me deciding that like, if there isn't a space here for me, I will create a space. And that's what Jacksonville does. So I think if you're a young artist out there looking for it, show up, be in the places, meet people, but also know that like, if you build it and you start building community around what you're building, they will come. Um, I'm, I'm curious about, uh, going outside of the city and finding opportunities outside the city. Um, because we all know, like in Jacksonville, if you want to put a show up, there are places here that are fully welcoming to local artists, right? Like just off the top of my head, Yellow House comes to mind. Um, doing a, uh, something at Cork, uh, comes to mind. There are also other, many other places that you could go, but I'm curious, like, how do you, uh, move beyond the city to, you know, national and and just other cities as well? How do you plant those seeds? Um, I mean, lately I've been doing, uh, like festivals, like I did the, um, arts field, um, Lake City, South Carolina, which is like a very small city. And when I went there and I saw the, how huge that festival was and people coming from all over the country and the world, it made me like, oh, my God, Jacksonville, we got to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then uh, uh, next month I'm doing the and I actually won a prize there, yes. too. Yes. And then the following year or this year, my wife won. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's possible. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, this year we're doing art prize. I mean, yeah, yeah. Art prize in uh, Grand Rapids. And the good thing about that too, we both have been accepted again. And not only that, but I just received a grant just a show there. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that's one thing you can do is just start doing, uh, festivals, mm-hmm. you know, that give out prizes. Prizes are good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, um, <laughs> I think another is residencies. I know you kind of have to get a little bit into your career a little bit to maybe start thinking about that. I was um, I was honored to, to be a part of a residency with Long Road Projects in the Erie uh, Culture Council in Erie, Pennsylvania. So I, I did about a month up there in, in the cold Florida, but I wasn't used to that. <laughs> um, so I think doing that and, and, you know, we live in a social media age now. And I think, you know, just your networking through Instagram and Twitter is, is there. Um, you know, thanks to that, I kind of can kind of can go anywhere I want to. Um, wherever, wherever I'm in a, a city, I probably know a photographer or somebody there. And they're like, hey, Mount, what you want to do? You know, and, and I'm blessed with that. The more you just kind of build upon that. And so many people that are like you in these other places that you you have no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think social media is a great way to find some of those opportunities. I know for myself, um, I found a lot through like hashtags, 
that a lot of entities would use in order to reach a broader network. So if you look up hashtag call to artists, and this is especially for, you know, those looking for more opportunities outside of the city, it's one easy way to do that. There's also databases that all the call to artists, um, cafe is one of them, call for entry. Um, they have a huge database of opportunities all around the country from exhibitions to submission-based things to festivals to um, city-commissioned mural, public art projects. Like, it's there's so much out there. Yeah. One thing that I'll add um, that, you know, put on my teacher hat yeah. that I teach my students to do, and, like, if I'm, you know, working with a group of artists, is to do what I call CV stalking. So, like, find someone whose career you like to model, pull up their CV, see where they've been, like what shows have they been in, what residencies they've had, and then sort of like use that as, as a starting point. You know, do I qualify for these things? What do I need? Would I qualify in a year from now? Things like that. So I, I teach people to CV stock all the time. Yeah, I mean, I early in my career, I would do that all the time. Like if there was a uh, theater artist that I loved, uh, I would totally figure out like all the places they'd been, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the 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 first one, the 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 minor league, so to speak, that would be the one I would target. Absolutely. Um, and <laughs> and a lot of times I didn't get in, but like preparing to target that uh, that that venue or whatever, it also left me with a body of work that I could use and send out to other places. Mm -hmm. So for me, like. Um, when I would apply for something and I didn't get it, it was never a loss mm -hmm. because it made me think about my work. It made me had, uh, made me have samples of my work that were ready to send out to other places. I think one thing that I, when I think about art in general, is that you know, to be honest, like art is a, a lot about rejection. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yes. you mm -hmm. know, let, let's speak on that. Like, mm -hmm. like you guys are, are uh, in my opinion, um, just like world class artists. I, 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 I love everything that you guys do but it took a while to get there it took like a lot of you know false starts mm -hmm. to get there talk to me about that one thing that i learned from overstreet i don't know if you know that he taught me this um was that sometimes it's not so much about you're always trying to get in the show you're always trying to get the thing but sometimes it's about looking at who um who the jurors are mm -hmm. and and having an opportunity to get your work in front of those jurors you know it's just to kind of start to establish like recognition recall things like that so that really made me kind of pay a lot more attention to not only like hey there's this opportunity but who are going to be the people sitting at the table that will see the work so, yeah i hope that wasn't your answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean um i am decently transparent about it but i think for majority of the opportunities that i apply to whether they're residencies grants or um mural festivals. I think this year I have had probably over 25 rejections. And um, and every time I get it, my heart breaks a little, but I also feel like, oh yeah, it's the same thing. Who saw that mm -hmm. submission? And you know, I'm gonna come back stronger and I'm gonna keep pushing myself so that I do get that acceptance one day. And it, and it, it happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, uh, there's a famous, um, a famous uh, uh, whatever it's called, but it's the New York Times puts it on, right? And, you know, photographers all over the world signed up for this thing. I've signed up for years and years and years. And um, this year is finally the year that I finally stopped doing it because, like, well, I work with them now. Like, I don't need to deal with it. <laughs> um, but it kind of just let me know, like, the more you just kind of kept putting it out there, you're like, maybe somebody actually is looking at it. Like, some, trust me, we got you. We don't need you to be here. So I kind of try to look at the glass half full sometimes with it, too. Yeah, any anytime I apply for something and I don't get it, they're immediately my enemy, and I have to crush yeah. them. <laughs> like, right. Oh, yeah. Like, if I don't get it, I gotta crush you. I gotta like one day you're gonna look back and be like, huh? Mm -hmm. I passed on Al Letson. Mm -hmm. Yes, you did, sir. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so listen, what, one thing that like, and this is no judgment, okay? Please, listeners, no judgment. If you invite me to your house and, and you've got this in your house, like, I'm not judging you, I'm just saying. But, like, it drives me a little, maybe there's a little judgment of people who have Target art in their house. And, like, <laughs> when there's such amazing artwork from local artists that you can go out and buy. So 
I would love for you guys, as we wrap up, to tell us where they can find your art. I'll start with oh, Aaron. Wait. If they do have a Target art, it might as well be one of mine's. Ah, <laughs> bam, bam. <laughs> I yes. paint on targets. <laughs> literally. Uh, literally. <laughs> literally. 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 Um, okay, for me, um, pretty much every, everywhere you can find me at Aaron is Creative. So that's E-R-I-N, Aaron is Creative dot co. Um, so that's most social media platforms. Um, artist Types has its own. So if you're an artist and you're looking for um, some help on that end, then you can find me at Artist Types. Yeah, everything is under my name, Overstreet Ducasse. Elena? ElenaOlander.com and Elena Olander on social media. Uh, MountJax.com, MountJax, everything, M-A-L-C-J-A-X. All right, and that's it for this segment. Elena Olander, Malcolm Jackson, Aaron Kendrick, and Overstreet Ducasse, thank you all for coming in to talk to us today about being an artist in the First Coast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, and we will be right back. <laughs> 